After Assassin's Creed Unity's disastrous launch, Ubisoft needed a way to turn around the negative opinion surrounding this game, and so as a way to say sorry for releasing an unfinished game, they gave us the Dead Kings DLC for Unity completely for free, which if you know this company at all, is extremely rare for them to do. So even though the state of Unity on launch was really bad, you can commend Ubisoft for at least trying to make amends with a free DLC. Of course, if you've seen the nearly 50 minute review I made for Unity a month or two ago, you know I really like this game, and to me, this DLC feels exactly how the DLC in Assassin's Creed should be. It puts you in an all new world, adds a few new gameplay mechanics, enemy types, weapons, etc., and has a story that serves as a sequel to the main story and expands upon the main character in meaningful ways. If you're one of many who now really enjoy AC Unity, this DLC is everything you could want, and on top of all that, it's free for everyone who owns the game. One of my favorite parts parts about the Dead Kings DLC is the all new open world in Franciade, which is known today as Saint Denis. The open world is also one of my favorite things about the main game. Not only is it historically accurate and has an incredible atmosphere, it's also very well designed for parkour, and that carries over into Dead Kings as well. I love how they fully leaned into the tone of the DLC with the grey skies and fog. It gives this very dark, creepy feel to the world, and it makes it stand out and feel unique from the main game's open world. There's still plenty of civilians and guards roaming the streets, the atmosphere is still wonderful, and the world's still well designed for parkour even if there's less buildings and a few more open areas, they still find ways to allow for parkour with structures like windmills and everything. Sure the world is quite small, but in this case I think that works to the DLC's advantage. It keeps everything in the world engaging, and there's not really any empty space. A lot of this DLC is also spent in many different spooky caves and catacomb networks, again it feels different from the main game and gives you all new environments to explore and traverse. The caves are also where you'll experience the new enemy type, the raiders. The raiders are always in the caves mining or looting. What's unique about them is they are usually in very large numbers and can easily swarm and kill you if you're spotted. However, if you kill the leader, the other raiders will run and cower in fear. It's not a drastically unique enemy type, but it's certainly a nice addition and freshens things up a bit. As for new gameplay mechanics, there's not a whole lot of aside from the lantern, which you can use in caves and caverns to scare off all sorts of critters that can harm you, like rats, bats, and bugs. You use the lantern for quite a few puzzles, and you can replenish the oil in it, and conveniently place jars in the caves. Dead Kings also introduced a whole new weapon type, the guillotine guns, which can be used for combat and have some very nice execution animations, along with a mortar bomb that you can shoot into a group of enemies for a big explosion. I like the guillotine guns, I just find the mortar bomb to be a little weak, even with the higher quality versions. Some enemies can survive the first shot, which is kind of annoying, but it all depends on the enemy type you're dealing with. If it's just regular raiders, it should kill them all in one explosion. One-handed swords are far superior in combat for AC Unity. They're just much faster than all the other weapon types, so there's not much of an advantage to using a guillotine gun from a strategic point, but they do look really cool and are certainly a lot of fun to use. There's a few new outfits for Arno as well, which I personally really really like. The raider outfit fits really well with the tone for the DLC and the more hopeless and brooding Arno. There's also a version with the iron mask on which looks pretty funny as well, and the guard of Franciade outfit which I also really like. As for side content, Dead Kings has a lot of the similar side quests from the main game, which I already believe to be really underrated as far as side content goes. I really enjoy the murder mysteries which are present in Dead Kings, and the Franciade stories which are the equivalent of the Paris stories which I also enjoy. There's more of those riddles to solve which leads to a special sword, and there's a new type of side quest, the Outpost, where you have to assassinate three enemy captains in an area and then escape. Pretty simple concept, but quite fun to have a little sandbox for stealth. As for the main missions, I was a little disappointed by the lack of those black box assassinations from the main game. There's a few times where you get some different infiltration or distraction opportunities, but there's not really any big assassination targets in this DLC like in the main game. There's quite a few puzzles involving the lantern and lighting bonfires. Some of them are very easy, others are a bit frustrating, but overall I quite liked them. Then of course there's your usual tailing or chasing missions. One of the tailing missions towards the end I thought was a bit too long, but whatever. All in all, the mission design was fine. I was just hoping for more of those black box assassination missions from the main game, since those were always my favorite. The story for Dead Kings is arguably the most interesting part of this DLC, and there will be spoilers for the main story of Unity and this DLC, just in case you're 
you're watching this without having played Unity yet, the video is in chapters, so just skip to the next chapter if you wish to avoid spoilers. Again, for Unity's main story and the Dead Kings DLC. So Dead Kings takes place just shortly after the end of Unity's main story. We find Arno still grieving and brooding after the death of Elise, the love of his life, and he seemingly abandoned all sense of hope and purpose as he meets with Marquis de Sade, who is quite present in the main game, and agrees to steal an artifact for him from the royal crypt in exchange for passage to Egypt, where Arno hopes to run away and hide from everything in France and possibly start over. Now, without a doubt, Arno is the best part about this DLC's story. We really get to see the kind of effect Elisa's death has had on him and how it's caused him to change. The once optimistic and hopeful assassin with a keen sense of justice is now nothing but a broken and emotionless shell of a man who's haunted by all his loss. This story is all about Arno reigniting who he truly is and finding purpose once again without Elise. But wow, they really don't make it easy for him, huh? He sees this woman who looks exactly like Elise. And I mean exactly. You know how they say after you lose someone, you start to see that person everywhere it feels like, even though it's not really them? That happens to Arno, except this woman literally has the exact same hairstyle and clothes as Elise. Like you'd think she's some cosplayer or something. Who knows, maybe that's just Arno's mind playing tricks on him and the woman doesn't really look like that. But wow, that's cruel to put him through just after her death as well. Those who didn't like Arno because he was always pining or chasing after Elise in the main story are really gonna like him in this DLC. He gets a good amount of development in a short amount of time thanks to the catalyst, Leon, who's a hopeful little boy who wishes to free France from oppression and bring those accountable to justice. At first, Arno uses Leon and discourages him from trying to fight back, telling him that the struggle is useless as all it will end in is his inevitable death. But I think Leon really reminded Arno of his younger self and why he became an assassin in the first place, to redeem himself. Now it may seem a little silly sometimes for Arno to be working with this very skilled little boy, but Leon is the kind of character Arno needed to rediscover himself and his purpose, and for that, Leon's character works really well. He looks up to Arno and is very angry and disappointed when he finds out Arno doesn't care about France anymore. My biggest issue I think with the story is it's just not long enough. It's like a two to three hour main story, and so there wasn't a ton of time to focus on Arno's journey and development, so when he does suddenly decide to flip the switch and help Leon to save France, it does feel a little rushed. It still works well, don't get me wrong, I just wish we spent more time on the broken and helpless Arno, so that when he finally does make that shift, it makes the moment way more impactful. It also would have been nice to have more missions and substance to the DLC, but what we got was short and sweet, and you gotta remember this is free so I'm not going to complain too much about the length. We also got some more Napoleon in this DLC, in much more of an antagonistic role, which I like to see since he was more of a friend to Arno in the main story. Seeing him in this darker, more ruthless light was pretty cool, as he tries to get his hands on this piece of Eden. The story ends with this really awesome sequence of Arno retrieving a head-shaped lantern with an apple of Eden inside that torches all enemies who come near him. It reminded me of those sections in the Ezio trilogy. Arno then delivers the piece of Eden to the Creed as it's sent to Al Mualim in Cairo. It's too bad we never get to see the result of what happens with that. It seems like that was something that could have been explored in a potential sequel that I think Arno definitely deserved, especially after all the growth he had in this DLC. Plus, we know Arno becomes an assassin again, so I would have liked to see that unfold, but oh well. Ubisoft hates sequels now, apparently, even though the most popular character in their company's history had sequels. Just saying. Funnily enough, they even paid a little homage to Ezio in this DLC. Requiescat in, pace. in conclusion, the Dead King's DLC for Assassin's Creed Unity is just about what you want from a DLC. It may be a little on the shorter side, but I say it makes up for that by being free. You get more Unity gameplay with this dark and spooky tone with Franciade as the open world, a few new gameplay mechanics, outfits, weapons, and a new enemy type, and a story that develops and makes Arno into a far more interesting and fleshed out protagonist. Protagonist. If you haven't played this DLC yet and really enjoy Unity, then what are you doing? It's free. There's no reason not to try it out if you enjoy this game. But if you have played the DLC, let me know your thoughts on it down in the comments and perhaps where it ranks for you among the other Assassin's Creed DLCs. Honestly, Dead Kings is up there with some of my favorite DLC in the series, so I definitely recommend it for those who haven't tried it yet. If you're new and enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you considered subscribing to the channel.
channel. And if you wish to support me and get access to special perks, you can join the channel membership if you'd like. The link to join is in the description. I'll also leave a link to my full nearly 50 minute review of the main game. But other than that, thanks for watching and have a great day, assassins.